broke down car on my front drive Last down low, shades pulled tight Burn up spoon, butane light Wasting away for another night I signed up to be a better man I'm not sure that's who I am Tore me up, now here I stand Trying to be all that I can Yeah, I'm reaching for your hand and I'm giving all I got I'm giving you my word No, my words don't mean a lot And you know I can't refuse him When the devil takes my hand So Lord, won't you have some mercy on a broken man Walk to the edge and I can see the ground 38 stories, long way down Just blow by, I hear a thundering sound I am lost and won't be found Yeah, I'm reaching for your hand I'm giving all I got I'm giving you my word No, my words don't mean a lot And you know I can't refuse him When the devil takes my hand So Lord, won't you have some mercy on broken man Lord, won't you have some mercy on broken men? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Steady Focused. And guys, uh, this is pretty special tonight. It's it's someone who I've been wanting to get on the show for a long time. It's Mr. Eric Willis. Now, this guy is one, uh, like I've said, not only does he have one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard in my entire life, but he's extremely hardworking. His band touring all over, and it is no doubt why these guys are climbing on the Texas country charts. He's just a special guy. And I'm very excited to interview him and share with you guys. So please help me give a huge, steady, focused welcome to my friend, Mr. Eric Willis. What's up, Simeon? What's up, dude? Not much, man. Man, uh, so yeah, we're set up in my studio. Yeah. Yeah. It's looks and, great uh, in here, man. I do a lot of shooting in here for just personal, but you're the first person I've had actually in front of the televisions. Oh, nice. Myself, breaking so it in? You're, yeah, here yeah, you you're go. breaking it in. straight, though. There you go. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> deal. So, Eric, I mean, talk to us. You're, you're from Henrietta, Texas. Yeah, right down the street. And, man... Um, Let's just talk about your touring the country, uh, your heart. Where, where do I want to start this, man? I want to start it with what does it feel like when you hit that first note and, you know, you, what does it feel like when you hit the first note? Um, I don't know that anyone's ever asked me that question, man. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know. It, it uh, 
you know, at this point in in the game, I've I kind of got over the like really nervousness, but you still get super super anxious before a show, you know. And the bigger they are, obviously, the more anxious and the more pretty like eagerness, you know, to get out on the stage and perform. And I think, you know, definitely after you hit that first note or the first few chords, uh, that all kind of goes away and you can get into your zone. You know what I mean? That's the best part of it. Um, you kind of forget about everything else. And me, which some people say it's, I do it too much, but I close my eyes a lot when you're on stage. So you can just kind of, you know, find where you want to be. And uh, for me, immediately, even when you have all that anxiousness and, and eagerness, once you hit that first note, it's kind of like it's over and it's game time, you know? Uh, everybody who knows me knows that I love tortured souls, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. like one one thing that I love about your music is it there's a lot of pain in there, dude. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's I would say it's beautiful pain, and it's entertaining, and it's energetic, and we get all that. But yeah. for me, I'm able to get my fix of pain you yeah. know, out of that. Yeah, so. Yeah. When did it was that an intentional thing or where when did you like click that like you gravitated towards some of that? Uh I really didn't know for the longest time. Um I really started to notice um when it when we first attempted to do some uh radio promotion for our singles and a lot of the radio people I talked to was like, oh, it's just kind of too slow. It's too, and I was like, are all my songs that slow? And I kind of started listening to them. And a lot of them are, you know, slower ballad type or love songs or, you know, stuff like that. And kind of realized, oh, well, that's, you know, just the kind of stuff that's naturally coming out. And I don't necessarily know where, uh, you know, it probably all stems from uh, all sorts of places, but I just feel like uh, me... Um, just as a human being, I have a real hard time like conveying emotions. I would rather just just sing about it and like just, speak. Yeah, just not deal with it or whatever. Not or just not talk about it. You know what I mean? And it's like it's just way easier to put it in a song. And, you know, when people ask what happened, you could just say, Oh, that's just a made up song. You yeah. know what okay. I mean? Okay. <laughs> so I just think uh that stuff probably just um un you know, subconsciously came out into the music. We got uh it became a theme. Catherine, um, she, you know, we put up a post like sending your questions for Eric, and she had this great question. She was talking about what was one of your most difficult lyrics or one of the most difficult subjects that you did sing about, you mm. touched on, um, you know. I think uh, probably some of the, the most difficult stuff that I've written about or more personal stuff I haven't released, you know what I mean? So I've got tons of songs in the vaults that, and, you know, there's some that, I'll, you probably never put out that you just write for yourself or whatever it is. And uh, so I don't know that anything like super, um, it's all, you know, most of the painful stuff has been love stuff, you know, falling in out of love or falling into what you think was love and just being uh, taught mm -hmm. the hard way, just how yes. life goes yes. and that, you know, that, you know, that there's some of that stuff that's uncontrollable and, uh, it, it just always made it a lot of bit easier for me to just convey that through music, you know what I mean? I got, so Brittany, you know, the love of my life, you uh -huh. know, that I'm with, my girl, she's, as I'm playing music, she's like, why are you always listening to breakup songs? I'm like, because <laughs> they're the best songs in the world. Yeah, and that's I can what, relate. It's, yeah, and it's like painful breakups yeah. and love loss. And, you know, I guess the, maybe the small amount of people that are with their high school sweetheart till they die that's one thing but like the majority of us have experienced a fair share of breakup you know what i mean and so it's it's one of the most universally relatable topics you know mm -hmm. and so i just think you know that's what gravitates a lot of people to that type of music it's like well we've all done that mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that mean you go through that a woman may not go through yeah yeah but men women whatever you're you've all dealt with breakup you know so yes, i mean it's yes, super, super relatable so it just always became an easy thing for me to write about man i know from from being in the music world as long as i was putting in my 10 years there's a lot of competition there's a lot of almost like a in, in my experience anyway it was almost like a high school you know competition like who's cool enough are you cool enough when you yeah. when you show up to the venue um so talk about self-doubt talk about um insecurities you know do you have any when you roll up or are you just like fuck it um, you know i'm me uh they've gone away or not maybe not gone away but uh they've gotten smaller throughout uh, and i think one of the things i started singing at a super super young age 
So I probably experienced a lot of that before I even realized what it was. And so I feel like the, I'm, I, one thing I'm, I'm a little, a lot more insecure about is my guitar playing, you know, compared to my singing because I've oh, wow. been doing okay. it for so much less time. And I felt like I've always, uh, contributed most of my time practicing or whatever, uh, singing. I'm always worried about my voice. And so, um, the vocal thing is always just, that's kind of like what I'm most confident in. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I'll show up and I'm, I'm confident in my voice, you know, but the guitar playing has always been a, uh, a thing for me that I'm probably not working on as much as I could be, but, uh, that's been one of my focuses here lately. So, uh, it's really one of the, and, you know, uh, playing by myself, solo acoustic stuff has helped that tremendously, you know, having to, uh, provide all your own rhythm stuff and everything while you're singing, uh, definitely great, was a great, like, base and foundation, but, uh, you know, there's, there's no way to hide anything when you're, when you're by yourself, so, yeah. so, uh, that's probably been, like, the biggest thing for me, and, and especially as of lately. So it's, it's just the amount of repetition that you've put into it has built your confidence to where it's not, it's a non-issue. I mean, I don't know that it's a non-issue, but it's just, like, I, it doesn't, I don't feel like it affects my performance, like, when I, like, when I was saying, when I'm thinking about my, my vocals, like, that's the one thing I can, you know, there's, there's stuff that you're, like, oh, well, I can, you know, yeah, totally. The, the ten, like I've been doing that. Like I'm confident in the way I can do yes, that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So I was just I was having an episode today where I was just, just out of the blue, like just kind of beating myself down. I was like I'm feeling unlovable and all this. I was like, what am I doing? You know. So yeah. I just had to kind of slap myself in the face. So yeah. Just I guess curious if you go through those moments and how do you? Yeah, let's say that if you do go through a moment where you're feeling unlovable or down, like how do you snap out of it? Uh, music, you write a new song. Music right? is always yeah. my thing, and whether I'm um, whether I'm writing, like I don't always write to get out of emotion, but just listening to other stuff, uh, that's always been, uh, you know, I've got I've got a pretty eclectic uh, amount of stuff that I listen to, but uh, it's all for like the moods I'm in. You know what I mean? Like I have, you know, I love the the sad love songs, and in, in some points, you know, and then I love. When I work out, I listen to like hard rock stuff. When I'm on a road trip, I listen to like, you know, upbeat, you know, boogie type. You know, there's just like, uh, I feel like there's always an answer for that, you know, in music. So that, that's always been, you know, my tie bag. What is the road like? Man, it's, uh, it's got its, uh, pros and cons for sure. Uh, I love it. I've, I've become, uh, here in the last couple of years, it's been, more and more progressively uh longer distances you know what i mean i've always done a little bit of traveling for the stuff but uh these past couple of years uh especially i've been doing a bunch of private stuff really all around the country and uh has definitely um it's been great it's uh given me reasons to uh travel to places you know a lot of the times i'm planning uh little trips in between my spots because I'm in states that I've never got to go to before. And I, you know, I want to see, I've just uh, started booking some stuff um, for this December out in California. And I was always already routing my way through the Grand Canyon and stuff like that. So it's like, it's given me a great opportunity to, um, to see, you know, stuff that not that I uh, couldn't have seen, but uh, it's just given me an excuse to get there. Like, like, why not just go now? But, um, the driving, like, and I do a lot of it solo, the driving does take a toll, especially when alone, when you're alone, there's, you know, as much as I love listening to music, we're in the car for, you know, 20 hours straight, you know, stuff gets old and you've got to have some, I've, I've been doing some podcasts and stuff like that to, to get, uh, uh, some other stuff in there, but it's got, who do you listen to? What, what kind of podcasts are you into? I listen to everything from like hunting podcasts to Mark Marin uh, to uh, I've been listening to Dak Shepard's new. Uh, I don't know that's new. I just started listening to it. Yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, there's quite a few I've been falling into. Uh, Tom Segura uh, and his wife have one. Uh, I like the comedy ones. I like the yeah, cool, yeah, cool. yeah. So you're on Spotify. I yeah, love yeah, you on Spotify. Yeah. I'm so glad you're on there. And <laughs> I I took the time. I knew you had released True Colors, your latest yeah. EP, mm -hmm. semi-recently, you know. Yeah, 
April, May? Yeah, somewhere? okay, good. Yeah, months so, so I wasn't too far off. Yeah. I uh, love the artwork. I love the vibe. It Thank feels you. like 1970s vintage, you know, Thanks. throwback. Yeah. Um, and I really took the time to just soak it in. You didn't disappoint me. Basically, I'm crying the first few songs. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, talk, that's a sad one, man. Talk about that EP. Um, uh, the majority of those songs were written with Ben Atkins, a uh, guy that I've written tons of songs with and used to play guitar with me full time. Um, wrote uh, four out of those five with him and another one with a friend, Joey Green, um, out of Fort Worth. And um, most of them were songs that um, were quite a bit older and that maybe didn't make the cut on another record. They didn't fit right or whatever. And then uh, a few of them were new ones that um, that just came, I guess, in this past year. The year, the year bef- prior to releasing that record, so uh, some were new, some were old. Uh, but we went into that record. I was just gonna put them, put them out on an EP, just acoustic, just me and a guitar. And uh, went down to my friend Patrick Hertzfield down in Austin. He's got a little studio down there, Signal Hill Studios, and um, started recording. And just immediately felt like the songs needed um, a bit more production or whatever. So we uh, ended up adding piano, cello, and violin, and harmony vocals to to my acoustic tracks, and uh, made this really cool, still technically acoustic uh, EP that I think uh, has a lot more uh, dynamic than it would have if I would have just put the songs out, you know, on my own. So um, it was a kind of a si- not a side project, but a project that we I didn't have much. Uh, vision going into it and just kind of melted into mm-hmm. what I think, you know, those songs need. And I think and that's awesome sometimes where we just, we don't have it all planned out. We just kind of let it go and let, yeah. let the, the universe guide it to where it needs to yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. And it definitely, did. I, you know, every record before that was super planned out as far as songs, instrumentation, you know, stuff like that. And we just totally not, not did it on a whim, but it just kind of let, happen what happened and I was like oh well, let's add some piano and that sounded great and I was like oh I'm hearing something else you know we brought in violin and cello and then I was like I, I've got to have some harmony vocals now that yeah, we have this nice yeah. bed of music yeah. on there now so uh, uh, Courtney Patton a, a great singer songwriter that has a, a new record out this year um, sang on there um, on, she sang harmonies on all the other songs and then we do a duet at the end of the EP I tell everyone if you can make it Suffer through the first four sad songs. You get a nice little upbeat treat at the end <laughs> yeah, with yeah. a girl, a female singer on there too. So yeah, I, th- I think it turned out great, man. man I love I it. It turned out how it, it. should have been. So. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. So we're, we're in Wichita Falls. You're from Henrietta. Yeah. You know, I know we got a lot of people from this area that know you that are, um, that you bring hope to, I think, in a way, because they say, man, if Eric can do this, if, if he can persevere, if he can have this type of success, it's possible for me. So what do you say to, uh, you know, an up-and-comer who is inspired by what you're doing, but they're having self-doubt? Um, really, it's the repetition, I feel like, in the beginning. And uh, if I would have realized it a little bit sooner, I probably would have got on the, on the treadmill a lot sooner, you know, as far as, like, grinding, because that's really all it takes. Uh one in a million people are going to, you know, get found on YouTube and, and blow up other overnight. You know what I mean? There's not really, and these days, even the record deals are, uh, it's a, it's a different world. It's not like, uh, you know, the whole stardom thing of getting found and, and getting a record deal is like, it's, I'm not saying it's dead and can't happen, but it's a lot more scarce these days. So really your only bet is to, perform live and and make fans and because whether they're buying cds which uh, is a dying breed these days you know streaming is is dominant and uh for like for me as an artist there's no you can hate it or love it but there's really no other option right now so what are you gonna do i mean there's other options but uh, yeah i I feel like you're just gonna have to adapt or, or die so like in the beginning you know, you're not worried about selling records or doing like that. You you have to worry about perfecting what you do and and building loyal fans. So that's what I the past few years and especially with the house concerts and stuff that I've been doing around the US, 
I feel like uh, connecting people on that smaller level, the more intimate level, builds these fans that are with you for years. You know, some of the you know people that I've, it's a relatively small career I've had so far, but I've got fans that were there from the beginning that buy every t-shirt you put out, every record that you put out, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's, so that's been my, my focus is to build loyal fans. And we've had, you know, decent success doing that in our small circle in Texas. And I've just been trying to expand that here lately and, and do it other places. So I, just like yeah. get after it, like play get the open it. mic nights, play, you know, drive down to Fort Worth, play some open mic nights and, uh, you know, just always stay working on it because you're not going to get over your stage fright <laughs> at home, you know? Yeah. Okay. And, okay. I, and I definitely, uh, at the beginning, I, you know, when I first started playing here in Wichita Falls, it was at, uh, Iron Horse, uh, Paul Schultz hosted Wednesday night, open mic night. Shout out to Paul. Yeah. And, uh, I was, I was actually in high school when I started doing that and I would be deathly afraid to get up there and play two cover songs. Cause but as, at that time, you know, I made new two or three, four, cover songs wasn't even writing my own material and uh i feel like just getting back up just getting over those stage jitters does wonders for your performance you know what i mean you're going to be better vocally musically everything once you get past that and the only way to do that is just just do it in the beginning you're going to suck in that. the beginning i saw old videos of me first times i was playing and even when you had friends, friend, oh, that was that was badass, man. I was like, man, <laughs> I needed some work, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you just got to get in there and grind it out in the beginning and get over that stuff. That's it, dude. And, you know, this this show, we we talk uh, to people who are successful in a lot of different avenues yeah. and venues. You being a successful uh, musician and artist uh, in music, it, I mean, you you echo the same thing we've heard from the master photographers and and all the way. It's put in the motherfucking work. Yeah, put in the work. Yeah, put in the work. That's the only way. I mean, like you know, yeah, uh, we've had a couple YouTube videos that got a great amount of hits, but what has that done? You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. it's, uh, it, I'm not like I'm saying. You can have a video go viral. You can have uh, you could get called by Columbia tomorrow and say you have a record deal. I'm not saying that can't happen. But you're still gonna have to put in the work, you know. You still gotta, you gotta be better. <laughs> so what, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but what's the importance 2018 as as a musician content? Yeah, and I feel like uh, almost constant content. Uh, as far as you know, I have a lot of friends in the business that everyone's trying to figure out how to release a record these days. Because back in the day, you recorded a record, and a record label put it... You may have put a single out, but a record label put it out. And that record carried some buzz for months. You know, people would talk about a record for six months, eight months, a year, before it kind of died off. And I feel like, you know, as p people's attention span has dwindled, uh, and with the amount of content they have at their fingertips at all times, you've got to stay constant so people like for example people these days uh they'll release an ep a five six track ep and instead of putting it out they release a single every month for six months there you go and basically you know when someone puts out one song you're going to listen to it if someone puts out 10 how many people are going to sit down and listen to all 10 it, yeah, it's it's that's good. fewer and that's fewer good. So uh, everyone's trying to figure out, and people are taking different tactic, tactics on it. You know, some people are, are still uh, putting out records or whatever, and my next one's going to be a full-length record. But uh, you kind of have to figure out a new way uh, to build that hype for, for longer. So like I said, releasing singles leading up to the record for a couple months, releasing stuff to radio before it's available to, to build some buzz, uh, releasing video content for, you know, people wanting to see lyric videos and stuff like that. Uh, and just kind of timing all that out to where that record carries for the longest amount of time is what everyone... I, I don't know how it's done. No one yeah. does, really, because yeah. it's a new formula these yeah, days. Yeah, just keep, yeah. keep putting it out. There's so it's like, in the meantime, I'm just going to try to stay as constant as possible. You yeah, know? okay. And you, I don't want to, you know... I'm not saying you're going to get a song from me every day or every week or whatever, but, you know, try to stay relevant, you know, spread it yeah. out throughout the year where I'm doing something every quarter or every three months where you got something new for people to look forward to. 
There you go. So you guys heard it right here. If you guys are video photographers <laughs> or uh, recorders, team up with Eric. Keep them entertained, yeah, man, yeah. or at least try to. You know, you're gonna put some stuff out with the release of that last uh, EP. You know, it's way different than just the record right before, as far as instrumentation. It's a lot of slow songs, sad stuff. Uh, no really rock and roll guitar, no drums or anything like that. So I was kind of worried about um, the reception of it, but in the end, I was. You know, it's like, well, some people are going to, some people may not like it and some people, it may turn on new people that, you know, had no clue. So it's like, at this point, at, at, at me being an independent artist, I feel like the greatest advantage to my thing is being able to release what I want whenever I want to. Yes. And so it's yes. like, there's not a lot of people that have that luxury. You know, I know tons of people, even in small time record deals, uh, that they're all on their time, you know, when they want to release it. They have to have their approval for artwork, you know, there. And it's like, man, that doesn't sound very enticing to me. So it's like as as many um, hard, um, as many hardships as a, you know, a independent artist has, I mean, use the one huge benefit that you have is you have control over everything you, you put out. Okay. You know? And so you got, so as far as social goes, I mean, I'll say Spotify is social, even though maybe it's not, yeah. but so you got Spotify, where, where all are you at right now that, are, that you're finding is working for you? Um, Instagram is, is probably my favorite platform just cause I like the photos and usually it's less, um, words and just like, you know, they say just picture the says a thousand words right, cause it really right. does. You know, I can get a lot more from a picture than, you know five paragraphs of stuff because how much are, are people going to read so i like the instagram uh i'm on twitter uh facebook i don't know they say facebook's dying but also uh, there's still a loyal yeah i think facebook's strong as ever I yeah mean, there's it's it's still a very i can tell huge differences in my uh like campaigns for shows when um when i do and don't use facebook do you, you know. do a lot of uh, paid advertising on on so on uh, Facebook or Instagram as part of the routine? Not now? not lots of it, but the bigger shows I do, and then also when we're releasing music and uh, you know new stuff yeah. like that, we it we def see a huge. And I'm not putting tons and tons of money to it, but even you know throwing twenty bucks to advertise for a bigger show, just just the number amount of people that are gonna see that post. Just when you see the numbers, it's pretty staggering. About, oh yeah, totally. It's uh, a, you, you know about it, like not promoting and then promoting like it's like night and day. And you obviously the more money, the more people are going to see it. So it does have its benefits for sure. They've they've got it down to where it it does work when you pay. Right. That, that's <laughs> it. So what's next for Eric? Um, we're just trying to spread it, man. I'm doing more stuff. Uh, we've never been to the West Coast yet. I just uh, booked some private stuff out west in California and. Um, just trying to spread the circle, man. You know, uh, obviously doing tons of shows still in, in Texas in the immediately, you know, surrounding states. But, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to take it because uh, there's so many untapped markets that I hadn't even, you know, been to that uh, it's kind of – and it, it's it's a little discouraging. You're talking about uh, discouraging stuff, you know, going to these new places – when you've been playing a lot of these places in Texas where you've built a following and you can almost always guarantee there's going to be people there and you walk into a bar in wherever, New Jersey or so, and then there's three people there and it's you find out they were working there. You know yeah, what I mean? Yes, It's yes. discouraging at first, but um, that's one great thing I've, I've found with the house concerts is uh, we've linked up with these families uh, all over that uh, want to host music for people. And... Uh, they bring the people in, you know what I mean? They they tell their friends and family, hey, we're throwing a concert, hey, you know. And it's kind of, uh, it's been a nice little relief uh, doing those and uh, not Let having them to them automatically endorse you. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then after you play for those folks, you know, they're like, hey, if you're any anywhere in a three-hour radius, we'll be at a show. You know, you, you build oh, these you fans go. that yeah. are... Uh, Loyal fans from the beginning, uh, giving them a, a show, intimate show like that. Yeah, that's great, dude. So yeah, there's trying to get as many states as possible this year, and just keep spreading it. And P.S. We didn't even really touch on this, but I used to do your artwork for your yeah, albums, yeah, yeah back in the day. So and you did what? Uh, I think we did two three? or three of them. Yeah, yeah maybe three, three layouts, two EPs, and a yeah, 
full length album. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was fun, man. I'm I'm a huge fan of yours, Eric. Thank you. Man. I respect you as you. just like a, a hustler and somebody who's following their dreams. You're you're on it, dude. Um, I just want to kind of say one. I hope you're gonna play a song for us. I brought the guitar, man. I yes. figured I might as well. Okay. And well, yeah. So. <clears throat> Okay, we'll do that. And final thoughts. Anything else you want to say? I'll just open the floor up to you. Uh, man, I wish I should have pre- prepared a concluding dun, dun, statement. Dun, dun. <laughs> I just thank you, man. Thank you for putting this stuff out. You know, uh, this is stuff people need to hear. They need positivity all the time. I do. That's why I've 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 grown to some of the uh, podcasts that I listen to and some of the guests that they have on there just because of the. Uh, the kind of, uh, I've been there, I've done that, it sucks at some points, but, you know, the positivity, I think, it, it helps, man. Staying in that mind frame, it, it, it definitely uh, has results. Right on. I believe that as well. So, um, well, then let me move some of this stuff. We'll get you set up. Yeah. And we'll have we'll you jam a song, a song or two or something. Um, but I'll go ahead and hit the in, the edit, the wrap this up right now, because I'm going to get out of the way. But, uh, yeah. So, guys, uh This has been Eric Willis. My name is Simeon Hendricks. And until next time, I'm your host. I'm your number one, Mr. Simeon Hendricks. And this is Steady Focused. Laughing, singing to our favorite tune We didn't know how far it go Five years later and I still don't know And I tried and tried to keep my cool, yeah But now I'm fading fast Waiting on the sky to fall Yeah, just running for my life Thought that I could change your mind Turns out you're not quite the traveling kind And our love was like a summer day Great while it's here, but it just won't stay And I tried and tried to keep my cool, yeah But now I'm fading fast Waiting on the sky to fall, yeah Just running for my life I know I had it all, yeah Should've never thought twice I tried and tried to keep my cool, yeah, but now I'm fading fast. Waiting on the sky to fall, yeah, just running for my life. I know I had it all, yeah, shouldn't have thought twice. Shouldn't have thought twice. new one, man, that's going to be on that little tape thing.